we have last loop we will talk about the do while loop. So the do while loop, like we say, is the same as the while loop, except one thing different. They will execute the while loop, the while loop body first. Then we check the loop condition. So you can see the different from before the while loop. We have condition first, then we have the loop body. So if this condition never been true, this loop body will never be executed. However, for the do while loop, the syntax is we do first. So no matter, we don't have any condition yet. So do first. So that's why at least you will do the loop body at once. After you're done, we do the while. So we check the condition. So that's why we know at least one time the do while loop will execute first. Then be careful, the only thing different is after the while condition we have semicolon. So that's the do while loop. So like we say, since the do while loop and while loop kind of exactly the same, right? So now we back to our on uh, our example earlier, the guessing number example. This one is earlier our guessing number example. We have the while condition. So then, can we change this one become the do while loop? And also, what's different? Okay, so that's do to gadget. You can see here. Uh, so then, since you see earlier when we do the while loop, we need to force them to get in first. So we give them the guess value equal to negative one. But if we change to the do while loop, you will see I do the do, right? So that's why I don't need this condition to be true. Okay, so then I just move the while at the end. But don't forget, you need to put the semicolon. So that's why since they always do the first time, right? So that's why the guessing value, I don't need to give them the initial value. I just need to declare this guess number. So then you can see, right, so beginning they will say, enter your guess. Then they will get the guess is from the user def user input. So then you will see here the same thing. You will do the condition check. So if they are the same, they finish. Otherwise, they just give the user low or high hint. So on the other hand, you have the while is after the first time print. If the guess not equal to number, then I go back. Otherwise, we finish. So that's why you see if you run this program. Yeah, so then you will see you have the same result as earlier. Okay, so then we guess a number. We say 50. Okay, too high. So we say 35. Too high. We give them 20. Too low. So then we give them 25. Still too low. 28. Okay, still too low. 30. So then too high. 29. Then you got the number. So this one is you can change your while condition become the do while condition. So after we understand all the loop condition, I want to talk about another example is sometimes our loop, we have something from the user input. So like earlier, our condition is if you guess number equal to the magic number, we finish. Or sometimes we need to use it to tell me they done. Okay, so this one we hold as the Centino value. For example, you see here, I want the user give me all the input. So then we give them the total of the value, the input. So we say enter a number, an integer. So if input end with zero, then I know you finish. Okay, because sometimes uh, we have the user enter number, but if we say the stop, we don't want them to type stop. Maybe we just then give me the value. They are the same data type, but I know that value is not included in my input. So we know we finish. So you can see user enter two, three, four. So they're enough, so they enter zero. So then at the end, we only add two, three, four. So we add the sum equal to nine. Okay, so how should we implement this one? So this one, the same thing you can use in the while loop or do while loop. So then you can see here, this example actually is the while loop condition. 
So then uh, this example, I believe I have that in demo file too, but I just show you the screenshot like this for now. So you see, we still need to get the user input. So we're using the scanner. So then you see, we ask the user, please enter a value. So we get that value. So then we have sum. So whenever the user input is not equal to zero, I continue to increment the data to the sum. So then I print again. So this example, actually, you can use right in the while loop. But like we say, you see here, this part and this part program, they are duplicate. So then you can see here, right? So usually we'll write this one as a do while loop, uh, then become like this one. Okay, so the do while loop, at least we know we will print at the first beginning. So we print the first time, please enter the integer to add to gadget. So then we increment, uh, we add to the sum. So as long as your input data is not equal to zero, we come back to the do while loop. So that's another example you can compare while loop and do while loop. And this one is we call the Sentinel input value. I think this one for console input, you guys are all more familiar with that. Uh, you can try the program. So that's why in this example, what I want to show you is, I want to show you how we can do this one actually in GUI, in the J option pen. So from last week, when we talked about J option pen, we show you two options. You can show message, you can show input. So the next one we want to show you a new one is we call the show confirm dialog. So we see the example for the sample output, uh, but also you can run from your program, you will see the similar output. Uh, just one thing, sometimes according to your Java version, so they maybe show different icon. So you see this one is the same thing, we want to ask the user to enter the number. Then we ask them continue or not. You see you enter three. Do you want to continue? So I continue, I enter five. So do you want to continue? So then they say no. So you see they enter three and the five will give them the result is eight. So this one is the similar like earlier we do the do while loop or while loop. You have the sentinel value from the user to tell you you finish. But now here we will have the confirm dialog box instead of we doing the input check the user the while loop. So you can see when you want to do this in the GUI, right? You still need a while loop, right? So this while loop is what? This while loop actually will, while is condition for the user input for the show confirm dialog. So actually from the show confirm dialog, user enter yes or no or cancel. They will be the return type from this show confirm dialog box. So this one I want to show you now. We want to use J option pen that show confirm dialog. This one actually is a static method. So you run this method, you have return type. So this return type actually is the data type is int. So according to the user say yes, no, or continue. So that's the integer value will be different. So here, let me talk about the show confirm dialog box. You see, I give you four different show confirm dialog method, right? But you see, they can have two argument, or one, two, three, four, four argument, or one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So for all the function, they with the same name, but different argument number. We call they are overloaded method or function okay so here is the overloaded method in java with a method in c plus plus we call function so overloaded method or function mean they have the same function name but a different dialog box also different number of argument parameter argument so from your homework assignment one I, you should use at least this one for the four argument because one thing is 
the message you display, and also remember your homework assignment or lab exercise. Uh, yes, lab exercise. I ask you to change the title. So that's why in order to change the title, we need to have the full argument. So this one is, I quickly told you what to mean the overloaded method. This one we will talk about more when we are in the method chapter. But one thing is, now you should know, when we see method in the Java, they have the return type. So for the show confirm dialog box, the return type is int. Then last week we talked about show input dialog. That's string. So let's we using from the last week. So then we have the show message dialog. Actually, they don't have return type. So what I want you to do now is let's test the example. Uh, here is the output. So then I want to show you the so the source file. But the source file actually I want you to download so we can run at the same time. So I can explain to you. So you can post the video. So I want you to download loop using dialog box to see can you run the program have the same output as mine. So then I will continue to explain what happened. I hope you post the video and check the sample file where you run. So then let me explain to you what happened. So we will do exactly the same thing as the output here. Right, you see here we need to display the sum. So on the other hand, right, before we start off our while loop, the first thing in our main function, we need to have the sum declare and initial to zero. So then remember, we have our while loop, right? So the while loop actually is according to when we're using the show confirm dialog box, what is my return value? So this one is our confirm dialog box, right? You see, because user possibly give me yes, no, or cancel. Yes, I continue to accent to give me the input. No, actually, I will just give them the sum. So that's why actually how user choose from the show confirm dialog box in the while loop, decide how I want to do. Okay, so that's why here you will see here. Uh, so I have the while loop. This while loop, we just say using the option to check. So earlier we say J option pen show message dialog, right? They will re uh, show confirm dialog. They will give you a return value. But sometimes I don't remember one, two, three. So that's why in Java, if you have a constant number, uh, in J option pen, we have couple constant number. They have the class name dot variable name. So if value equal to J option pen dot yes option, that means user choose yes. Otherwise, user maybe choose no or cancel. But either way, no or cancel will finish, right? Right. So that's option we Default, we assign equal to J option pen yes option. We force to get into the while loop. So inside the while loop, the first thing, right, I will show input dialog box to ask user to give me the integer. So the user will give me an integer, right? But we will save in where? Right. Because show input dialog, the return type is a string. So I have a string called input. So line 17, I will explain detail later. But this one is because your input is a string. I don't want the string. I want the integer. So we can do the integer dot parse int function. They're passing a string variable. Then they will con convert this string become an integer. So that's why here I have a data. So I add to the sum. So then after I got the value, I just give them the show confirm dialog box. Should I continue? So then if you say no or yes, I finish. So if you say no or continue, I finish. But only if they say yes, right, I need to show the input dialog again. Then I get the input convert to the data. I add data to the sum. 
So then if they say no or cancel, so then I display show message dialog, the sum is the value.